So in order to use the CSV file that we've created with our coordinates in it, we need to put it through the R script that I've sent you. So copy it into your R folder, into the data fol subfolder within that. Here you'll see I've sent you two files from crew um, for precipitation and mean annual temperature. They are .nc files and I would be lying if I told you what that I knew what that was. But these contain all of the data um, that we'll need to extract climatic data for each coordinate point. Crew has a number of these different um, climatic variables, including things like um, temperature, maximum temperature in the hottest month or minimum temperature in the coldest month and cloud cover and frost. Um, and there's about 10 different variables. If you want to download them, um, benjaminbell.co.uk gives a really good um, tutorial on how to do so. Um, so if you just type in on his webpage, search for getting climate data for the crude climate data, it should show you how to do it. Um, I'm only sending you these two for now because they are extremely large files and I can't um, send you any more. But now we have our Darien Gap CSV in our data folder and we go out and looked at the script folder and the R script is in there and you can just open that with R. So initially, the first thing you have to do obviously is set your working directory set it to our directory folder, the R folder that I've sent you, that contains our data and our script and a place where all of our output files will go to. You can set your working directory with a line of code. I like clicking buttons sometimes, so I just do it like that. And here we have um, the packages that we will need to um, carry out this process. So if you don't have them, um, type the code install packages um, SP, for example. I know that on my computer, I have to install SP for my raster package, um, but you might not have to, and then load them library. This line of code library here will set your working directory so that in some code, when you say here, the um, program R will talk to the folder where all of your um, CSV data is and where your crew um, files are so that it can retrieve the data from your computer and use it to extract climatic data for specific coordinates. So when you click here, it tells you where it's, where it's clicked here at. So if it gets lost later, you just know that you can see, well, here is going to be looking in R, the, the directory that I've created. Then in the code that uses here, I've typed data with a forward slash before the file name, because then R will go into data, into the data folder this one and retrieve those files just in case you get lost that is a helpful thing to know so that is here and then we all also need ggplot later on this first line of code um, will create an object out of the precipitation data so um, we name it pre and just go ahead and click that. It does the same with temperature. And so if you decide that you want to use some of the other um, data files that are available, then you will basically do the same thing. Instead of writing pre, if you have cloud cover, I remember the variable's name is cloud. You say CLD, um, brick here, 
etc. Et and then in this point, you just put your CLD, you'll probably just replace pre with CLD. Um, and then you'll be able to download the data for that variable as well. Um, so we've done that for pre and temp. And then we have to read in the coordinates that we've created in our CSV file. We call that Darren gap.csv. So rename our file for me. Um, I, you have to say header equals true, obviously. I say that row names equal ref so that our references aren't read in as a column, but are used to name the rows instead. And then we only have two columns of data. And there's an error. Don't go up, no, no space, not happy. There we go. So now we can, um, I can show you, or you can show yourself what has happened. The, that R has read in our precipitation data so that it may be used. Um, so we say plot pre, which is our variable. And this is just one of the months of the year um, from the data set. There you go, you get a plot of the whole entire world um, with different precipitation rates from 1901. Precipitation rates, ah, like levels of precipitation from one month in a year. Um, you can also crop this to a smaller study area um, by defining the, um, the longitudes and latitudes. I can't remember what order they are in. Um, and you can then specify to crop the area that pre is applied to, to that cropped area, run it, you get a plot. There we go. Um, we have a plot of South Africa. I just wanted to show you that for the sake of showing you it. Um, but right now we are looking at data from the Darien Gap. So I want to see this. Um, and then we plot, put, our, put the name of where our coordinates are here and create points on our map. And it's wrong. So that means that I've probably put my longitude and latitude in the wrong order. So I realized what happened. I didn't delete these letters, which I don't know, might be a problem. And just read back into R. Try again. There you go, it works. Let me just replot so that I don't have these points on America, I mean on Africa. There you go. So, in order to extract this, these data, now we have to look at the next line of code, which is extract climate data from the raster brick as a data frame. We're going to set up an object or a data frame called pre-sites. So precipitation for our sites. Replace samples one or whatever I've put in here, Darien Gap, with our CSV file. There are two columns. And we'll do this for pre and for temperature. We then also have to extract um, or create row names. We've already defined our row names as our references earlier. So do that. This is just formatting our, our data set from add site, sample site names to the data frame. Also change column names. This will give us the names for the, the years, for the centuries worth of data that we have. So it's, um, yeah, you can try and make sense of that code if you want to. Years, each 12 months, repeat months, 
I'm 118 times because that's the amount that's in the century of data that we're using. So you'll have to change those if you use different time periods or if you yeah, use different data sets. These are the things you have to pay attention to that you can alter. So now years, months, names, pre and temp. And then the last thing that we have to do is give it a name. Darren Gack, Precipitation, 1901 to 2018. Same with the one for temperature. TMP. It. An error. Phenomenal. Okay, yeah, there's nothing called data in our output file. Delete data. Go into our output file. Et voila. We have a century's worth of climatic data for those coordinates over the Darien Gap. So you can do this with any amount of coordinates you want. If you put more coordinates in, like I've worked with around 4,000 before, 4,700, and it takes very long for this file to be generated. It takes a long time for the whole process to be done because this is the amount of data that you have. Um, if you select all, we have 90,687 cells here. And what we need to do with this going forward is take averages over the century if you're doing mean annual precipitation or you need to sort your data into years, into months, whatever. That just comes down to you being able to sort, it, sort data for what you want it. On the left, the row names are each of our locations, location one, two, three, four, five, six. And across the top is our years. And I'll show you how to take averages of these now. <laughs> 